Brilliant stuff. Thanks very much, Andy. Now joining us on the call on the mobile phone, we have a very special guest. We've been talking cruiserweights this week. It's a cruiserweight heavy show. We have the current British cruiserweight champion, Matty Askin, on the call. How are you, Matty? I'm very well, thank you. Thanks for having me on. No problem at all. We're just discussing the Gassiev Dortikos fight from last night. I'm assuming you oh, saw yeah. it. What did you think of it? I thought it was a brilliant display. I think um, Gassiev absolutely nailed the tactics last night. You know, he um, started off slow in the first one to four, and you, you, you had you thinking, wow, this Dortikos might, might cause me some problems. But, you know, the Dortikos didn't, he's never been 12 rounds before, and later on, he seemed to have gas, seemed to have gas out a little bit in there. Gassiev, um, power come through towards the end. Last week we saw Usyk against Bradis. Before we, we uh, get your winner of the tournament overall, what do you think of Usyk's performance? He looked beatable, to be fair. You know, in his last few performances, you're thinking, kind of put him on a pedestal. You kind of think, can he be touched? And Bradis, to be fair, shown that, you know, he does have weaknesses and they're there to be exploited. So I thought, you know, overall, I didn't think he looked... Um, that particularly as good as he has been in his last few fights, whether that's been down to be cutting down to weight or whatnot, because he looked, he looked uh, fairly ponderous on his feet and with his hands. So I don't know if some of that had too much to do, but fair play to breathe this, like I say, um, he showed some weaknesses in him. So obviously we're going to have Gassiev against Usyk in May in Saudi Arabia. Plenty of money on the line. Who's who are you going for? Who's going to win? Uh, for me, it has to be Usyk. You know. He keeps a phenomenal pace through the fight and, you know, I'm saying it can be hard to wait. He seems to get caught a lot the other week, but I just think his skills are far, far superior than, than Gassi has. But, you know, anything can happen. It's boxing and they're both, you know, they're both in the elite now. They're both top high-level fighters. So, like I say, anything can possibly happen. Um, you were well, just looking at the British rankings. Obviously, you're at the top of the tree. We've had a couple of cruiserweights on over the past few months, like to Tommy McCarthy, who you've obviously beaten. Luke Watkins yep. says he fancies a crack as well. Talking about Luke, first of all, that's something you'd be interested in, or are you just looking up, not down? <laughs> if I'm honest with really, you, I'm tired of him. We've offered him the fight, you know, and he's got some sort of mad number in his head that he thinks he's worth, and... You know, I, I just want to fight, and he says he does, but he never seems to step up to the plate. He knows you'll get an idea. So, you know, for me, it's, it's there if it's there. Otherwise, I'm not going to keep my eye on him. On March the 17th, you've got a fight coming up against Stevie Simmons. How's the preparation going in, and what do you think about Simmons as a fighter? Um, preparation is going really well. You know, I trained down in Chorley with, um, with Michael Jennings, former WBU world champion and British champion himself. Um, and his brother Dave Jennings. Um, I've actually moved down here um, just to get away from distractions. I've got a little boy at home and you know my partner, and I've got an house and whatnot. But I've, I've brought my dad's caravan down to uh, a little farm down in um, Risington. So I'm just literally here on my own constantly. I'm training three times a day. So you know, preparation-wise, it couldn't be any better. Um, as for Stephen Simmons, is I'm looking forward to the fight. I think he's a perfect um, opponent, to be fair, for my first defence. I think his style will suit mine. And I think it'll be an explosive explosive fight on the night. Just looking at your last three opponents, uh, Matty, uh, we've got Simon Barkley, Tommy McCarthy, Craig Kennedy. They're all undefeated fighters. So you're obviously on a good roll at the moment. You had a couple of setbacks early on in your career, a few defeats, like Sir John Lewis Dickinson, Oval McKenzie. Are you an example of how a defeat in boxing can be a learning experience? It doesn't have to be the end of the world for anybody. Yeah, of course it is. You know, you know again, I've them early on and you've got to learn. You have to learn by it, otherwise... It, it's just pointless being in the game, you know, if you're just going into there and making the same mistakes. You know, I, I made the mistakes pretty early on and I've, I've corrected them by joining the right team, maturing myself, making making differences to myself outside of boxing, which, which I think helped massively as well. Just to remind our listeners, we have uh, Matty Askin on the line, 22-3-1, and 14 knockouts. He's 29 years of age now, the British cruiserweight champion. Good fighter is Matty. He goes by the nickname of the Assassin. The Assassin Askin, who came up with that one? <laughs> My dad. I think he was drunk one night and just, <laughs> it just stuck. <laughs> um, any questions from any of the guys on the call or the panel? We've got Ozzy Smith. He's always good for a question or two. Ozzy, go ahead. Yeah, Matty, you've obviously just signed with Haymaker. 
Ringstar. How did that opportunity come about and what can that provide for you down the line? Obviously, you had a deal with Frank Warren, but I think it's fair to say that didn't really work out after the McKenzie fight. Yeah, um, it was... The contract just ran out with Warren. It weren't, it weren't nothing nasty about it. But yeah, um, I don't think I was kept busy enough after the McKenzie fight. I think that fight... I'd had 18 months out going into that fight, so I think they thought that was me at my best. Um, um, we got a phone call through the Haymaker Promotions and my manager said, let's go and have a sit down with them and see what they've got to offer. And to be fair, they've got they've, they've got the same sort of plans and, and mindset that I have in mind for this year. So hopefully if we get this fight out of the way, we get another quick defence in after this and hopefully I'm a self world title shot, if, if not an eliminator, later on in the year. And is the plan to try and win that British belt outright? Because not many boxers do that anymore, do they? I think they try and they win it and then obviously look to move on quickly. But it's something that obviously if you can win and keep it for good, then you can look back on your career and think, I've won that belt outright. Yeah, massively. Um, for me, and it's, a, it's a big, big thing, the ones that but do not get me wrong. But for me, it's where, the, it's where my opportunities lie for the, in the sake of, I will provide for my family. It's this. It's a job for me. This. It's it, which is you know which is how I have to take it. I have to take it as serious as possible because the next fight could be a loss. So for me, it's it's how my next chunk of my mortgage is going to be paid, and and that's how I see boxing. And whether that be I have to defend the belt three times, and I have to defend the belt three times. If I don't, then I don't. But you know, it's it's that's the way I have to look at it in my eyes. Anything else, Ozzy? No, that's all from me. No problem. What about the European scene, Matty? Would that be something you'd be looking to move up? You know, we've got the likes of uh, Masternak, Kudryashov, who can punch a bit Vlasov fought last night. Any of these boys on your radar? Yeah, no, definitely. That Masternak, he seems to want to fight me every other week. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I don't see why not. And I think that's the natural progression that you should do. You should... Kind of do the British a couple of times, European, you know, earn your spot in that sense and, and learn how to get to that top level. You know, a lot of a lot of English fighters seem to often be just British to the world scene and they get beat and they get beat pretty convincingly because they've not really gone through the levels of, you know, of, of going through the rankings of like going through the British and the, the European and then to the, to the world because they can now go British. Uh, WBA Intercontinental, WBA International, all these little belts now, they can, they can kind of swerve and pick on like a lower, lower set kind of fighters and get that world title fight. But I think the right way to do it would be to go from British to European to world. So I, I think that'd be the right way to go for me personally. A uh, final question for me, Matty, and we do thank you for coming on and joining us no uh, this yeah. evening. Um, Lauren Ciccoli and Isaac Chamberlain fought last <laughs> night. Um, it wasn't yeah. the best fight, but I mean, fair play, I suppose, no. for them putting it on. Do you think that Ciccoli's size and his awkwardness, it just completely sort of confused Chamberlain, really? Joe, you know what? I haven't actually watched it properly. I watched little bits and bobs. Don't bother. I, I, I watched the proper, I watched the Gassi and Dorticus fight and... Anyone with a boxing brain would have probably tuned into that rather than watch two novices getting paid a big wad of money and fight like a pair of idiots, in my eyes. Um, they seem to have a lot to say. And I, the, the, every credit to him for jumping in at this point because, you know, it, it's very early on in the career, but the money they were getting was stupid. Um, the call is, the call is, he like to say, he's at the south and goes, he's 6'6". Six, six. Yeah, six five and a half or something. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's a he's a big man. Um, but but I think he said himself yesterday and in, last night in an interview that he's just not ready to get up to this level just yet. You know, he's he's, he's got a lot of improvements, and that shows a lot of maturity on his side. That he's seen a lot of flaws that have, that need corrected. So if he gets them sorted, then he could be a good fighter. Um, Chamberlain's still got a bit to go back now. Obviously, he faced a loss last night, but it won't do him a lot of harm. I say, but I think he's had nine fights or something, so mm. he's still got a long way to go yet, and that, that'll not affect him too much. If they put somebody with your experience in against the likes of an Akoli from a professional fighter's point of view, how would you deal with somebody like him? He'd just be on his back <laughs> in a couple of minutes. It's simple as that. <laughs> um, there's, there's no other way about it, if I'm honest with you. I just, 
he's seen the flaws himself now if he can see some I've seen a lot so me personally I don't want to put it on him and I, I just don't think it'd take very long so it'd, uh, it'd, it'd need a stretcher anyway and that's for sure Matty uh, is there any social media or anything and you do that that you want to plug or anything like that yeah, I've just started, so everyone have to bear with me. But I've got Instagram, which is Matty Askin Boxing. Uh-huh. Um, I've got Twitter, which is Matty Askin. I think <laughs> I'm not too <laughs> sure. I need to do it better. And, and um, just the Facebook usual and Snapchat is I, I don't I don't have a clue. But other than that, I'm getting used to it. And the people, you know, just searching that, and I try and spend as much time answering questions and whatnot for them. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, it's great Stay to have you on. Stay off Twitter, though. It's the fucking best oh, bit. Yeah, Leon's right. Stay off Twitter. It can be a bit of a shit fest on there, Matter. It's a cesspit. Yeah, definitely. I know. No worries, boys. Excellent. Thanks for your time. We appreciate no it. All the best. All the best, bro. Cheers, Matty. Right. Thanks, bye.